to Twitch. This is Don't Starve Together for the Xbox One. This just came out today. Um, I was saying all that, and then my broadcast just decided to end, so... It's, it's whatever. We'll slowly figure it out, I guess. <laughs> oh man, what am I even doing? I hope this is all going swell. Okay, it looks like we're good now. Crying out loud. I was talking for like two minutes. Maybe I should just stop talking. <laughs> you guys know this is my favorite game. I'm so happy this has finally made it over to console because um, ever since it's come out, it's only been on PC and the first request and the longest going request that I can tell at least as a user is put this on our consoles. So Clay Entertainment has stated their first priority is going to be getting this going for Xbox and then next year the other consoles will start to see their additions. I was honestly surprised it didn't go to PlayStation first, um, being that I really saw the Don't Starve community bloom on PlayStation rather than on Xbox. But you know what? That's their decision and you know what? It's, it's fine by me. So. Uh, this video is just going to basically be about setting up your world. Um, a lot of people getting into this game are going to be brand new to it. Um, minus people who have been playing on PC and are just bringing in their Xbox friends for the first time. Okay, so let's look at some of this stuff. Collection. As you play the game, you will unlock clothes for your character to wear and it will help distinguish your character... Um, apart from your other friends. And it's really not a big deal unless you and your friends like to play as the same characters. Uh, we've got, let's look at our options here. It's basically HUD stuff. Um, can you really do controls? Nope, just look at controls and apparently redeem codes, um, presumably for special gear. Uh, and I should rectify my earlier statement. It's not just clothes that are a part of your collection. You can also get skins for different items. Um, for example, a lot of people on the official Don't Starve Together game for PC, if you're playing Early Access, one of the loyalty rewards was getting a special campfire skin. So instead of a traditional campfire with a whole bunch of stones in a circle and some logs and fire, it's actually kind of a pit inside of the ground. Um, and then, you know, different colors for treasure chests and stuff like that. So, history, huh? Oh, cool. Uh, so you can go back to previous games if you get disconnected or come back on a later day. Um, a little bit of information about the storyline. So in the opening sequence of the game, you get to see Charlie finally. Yay, Charlie. Charlie is actually, spoiler alert, Maxwell's magician assistant uh, Maxwell is the evil guy who's kind of put all of our characters into this don't starve world um, by sorcery and trickery and all that fun stuff um, and in the original games your character um, when exposed to too much darkness like if they're completely involved in darkness you might see them go ow Charlie bit my finger not only is it a reference to the beloved YouTube video, but it's also a reference to the character Charlie, who we finally get to see um, to some small extent in this game. Um, but yeah, she's kind of like our, our main villain in Don't Starve Together compared to Maxwell, uh, because Maxwell is actually a playable character now. Huzzah! Okay, that's enough of that. Let's let's start looking at some stuff. So. If you're just playing by yourself and you want a little bit of help, you can go into Browse Games. Um, you can choose some filters. So we have Social. It's not really about uh, survival. It's more just about having fun. Then you have Cooperative, which is about survival. This is, I think, my most common gameplay. I don't really play as anything else. Uh, competitive. You got PvP going on. <laughs> and then Madness. Oh man, who even knows? That looks... That looks real hard. 
Uh, you can search for games if you were given a name of the game. Uh, games, I believe, are up to six people. You can play specific seasons, start off in specific seasons, PvP on or off, password protection, friends only, uh, blah 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 blah. Hosting games, that's more fun, that's what I do most of the time, is I'm our Don't Starve resident expert at home, so I just, I do this for everyone. Um, so you can either play by yourself, and that's cool, or you can play with other people. So, huge, huge disclaimer here. The game mechanics of Don't Starve are totally different from Don't Starve Together. I'm making all these arm motions and y'all can't even see, it's great. Um, Crock-Pot recipes, a lot of them are different in Don't Starve Together. Enemy HP levels are different. Your character stats are different, how hard they hit, how much HP they got. Um, their traits, however, are the same, so like, some characters have resistances to cold or hunger, etc. Um, those are still in place, but the statistical side of it, uh, percentages and all that, those are tweaked to make the game more fair as it's more people against the one world. Or I guess if you're able to move on the second world, but you know, whatever. Um, so if you are a Don't Starve veteran, and not a Don't Starve Together veteran, you're gonna wanna play a couple rounds alone first just to get used to the new mechanics, some of the new monsters, some of the new items, etc. Um, I think the time us, the time span that hounds show up is also different. I think it's like seven days in Don't Starve Together versus the 13 days in Don't Starve. Okay, so we've got our server settings like that. Then you have the forest world, okay, the world attributes, I guess. So forest world is what everyone should be starting off on. Screw cave world. Most of you should not be playing in cave world if you're just starting. If you've got a group of noobs, turn off cave world. You're welcome. Um, and if your world's been going on for a couple of days, you can roll back. Um, I actually used this feature recently because a whole of, lot of us were just sitting in the game lobby waiting for some computer issues to settle and a lot of us were doing our character selection waiting on this other person and when we all got into the game it was like day six. <laughs> None of us had actually gotten into the game yet, we were still in character select. So we all had to exit out and I had to roll back the world to day one. Okay, so let's go over these, some of these noob settings. Um, biomes, together, cool. That's fine. What kind of buttons are we using here? Oh gosh, apparently I have the wrong buttons, that's fine. Oh, okay, so once you pick a loner together, you do have to go and enter your descriptions and information. This is a alone mode. So I can't enter as much information as I would in a online world. That's fine. Oh, okay. I got the buttons now, I think. There we go. Okay. That's another important note. Local mode in Don't Starve Together is split screen! We don't have that on the computer. You guys starting this for the first time on Xbox One? Y'all are lucky. You're getting a polished version of this game that some of us have struggled with for years. Okay, back to generating the world. So, biomes. Um, man, you don't have like all the descriptions that you do in the PC mode though. I always just choose together, it's fine. Your start mode. <laughs> So, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is actually kind of, I think plus means that you start off with a book bag of some essential tools. Dark means that you start off in darkness, if I'm not mistaken, and default's just fine. We always just use default. 
land branching. Don't worry about it. World size. I always choose huge. You get more resources. You get more uh, monsters. You get more beefalo. I, I just go for huge. Land loop. That's fine. Events. Oh, <laughs> Um, don't mess around with this until you go into the wiki and look them up. Just just keep it on auto, trust me. Okay, for noobs. This is where we get into the more intense part. Your autumn. You're going to want to have a very long autumn. You're going to want to have a very, well, a long spring. Um, the thing is with spring, bees are violent and auto-targeting. You're gonna want to choose long because the other benefits of spring are great, meaning the lack of heat stroke and freezing to death. But you don't want to deal with the bees for that much longer. Winter. It depends on your audience, or not your audience, but your friends. If you don't think your friends are going to start off very good at this game, or if your friends aren't experienced gamers, you might want to just say no. In fact, I always do no summer. I do a very short winter and no summer. Uh, because again, with winter, <laughs> there's no vegetable growth. Like, there's no farming done at all. You pick out of the ground what was already grown. You can't grow anything else. Um, I mean, come on, what else is there? <laughs> there are penguins all over the place being annoying um, you've got the walrus uh, what is he the hunter guy at the walrus camps there's going to be a few of him and they're all going to be after your booty and then you know the cold which will freeze everyone to death if you don't have the right equipment um, summer I think summer is actually meaner your crops have a chance of catching on fire. All of your stuff has a chance of catching on fire just spontaneously. Uh, see one of my videos from uh, Don't Starve Together, the season finale of season one and season premiere of season two. <laughs> it was painful, okay? That's all I'm going to say. Um, you've also got heat stroke. And it's very hard to combat heat stroke, actually. I, I don't like it. And, you know, all of this is assuming you even love, live through autumn. Season start. You're going to want to start off in autumn. It's the easiest of all the seasons. Days. Long days. Just, just trust me on that. Because with every season and every day, your daytime changes. As well as your dusk time and your night time. So start off with long days. It's better that way. And now we get to the point where you want to play on like super noob mode or just a little less harsh beginner I guess rain rain is fun rain's cool lightning you might want to say less lightning wildfires you might want to say no because it won't just affect the foliage in the trees it's gonna affect your wooden objects meaning your wood walls your wood fences, your wood doors, and most importantly, your treasure chests. Frog rain. Nah. Touchstones. You can't say more touchstones, unfortunately. I'm not sure when that happened. Normally I say extra touchstones, please. Uh, keep that on default. If you want to play super hard mode, turn off touchstones. You'll have no free way to uh, whatchamacallit um, regenerate your dead friends without taking your own health world of regrowth, default, disease nah uh uh, failed survivors doesn't matter I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't so fall failed survivors are just generated events and most of the time, they have some free gear that they've left behind, like book bags, uh, spears, torches, weapons, uh, tools, ingredients, etc. So if you don't want the extra help, turn it off. Starting resource variety. 
Um, you might actually want to pick... You know what? I don't even know. Just leave it a default. Forest for petrification! Nah, we don't want that. Forest resources! I normally keep most of these the same. Especially since you can't make them extra. Meteor fields, though. Nah, we don't want anyone getting struck by a meteor. Food! Those are good. Forest animals. Those are cool. We like those. Um, hunts are fine. Okay, so keep in mind that hunts are different than the hunter at the walrus camp. Hunts are things that you can go do as the player to go and find cool stuff. Pangles. Nah. Hunt surprises. Th that's fine. Ponds are cool. Bees are cool. Killer bees. Less. Tall birds. Normal. Um. Okay, it depends on if you plan on playing as Wigfrid or having a friend playing as Wigfrid. Wigfrid is your tank. She's good against tall birds. But if no one's gonna play as the tank, you might as well say less. Forest monsters. Okay, spiders are not that bad. Leave spiders on. Hound attacks, though, you might want to just say less. As well as for merms, just say less. Hound mounts, less, because they are the spawning point for hound. Uh, tentacles, less, because people don't listen when you say don't walk on the bubbles in the swampland because you'll get attacked. Clockworks, less, because people won't listen when you say stay away from the robots. They hurt real bad, and they have a much higher HP than in Don't Starve. I believe Don't Starve, their HP is 200. Clockwork Horsemen in Don't Starve Together, 500. McTusk Camps, turn that off. No, just don't. Lure Plants, less. Poison Birch Nut Trees, I actually... For the longest time, I played with them turned off. Um, because these guys spawn when you cut down numerous third level birch nut trees. You know, the birch nut trees where you chop them down and you get three birch nuts back. I call them third level, that's probably not what they're actually called. But if you cut down too many in one area, you will spawn a poison birch nut tree and they will shoot little monsters into the ground to come get you. You gotta not only defeat those, but the tree itself. And you'll most likely have a bad time. If you don't know what you're doing. Tree guards! Less. <laughs> if you cut down too many trees in the same area, and you don't plant any pine cones to try and atone for your tree murder, the tree guards will come out. And they will very slowly chase you until they decide to stop or they just lose interest or find something else to attack. Krampus! Cramp eye. Off. Krampus appears when you do too many naughty things. If you kill a slew of bunnies, poor innocent bunnies that don't actually fight you, they always run. Krampus will appear. I think if you kill butterflies as well, too often, Krampus will appear. So... Naughtiness is when you kill creatures that can't fight back. Uh, they are called innocent creatures. And maybe not even creatures that can't fight back, but creatures that don't auto-attack you. I believe regular level pigs are also a part of this. Um, probably raccoons, because raccoons are so cute. Um, or catcoons, whatever they're called in this game. Um... Well, you get some pretty cool stuff if you can kill Krampus. Turn him on later after everyone's experienced the game. The Berger. Screw this guy. He shows up on, I think, day 30. 40. And he raids all your stuff. It's not fun. Miskis. Um... Mies geese actually aren't that bad. They got cute little dodo bird babies. Uh, but the deer clops? Nah. If you're just starting off day 30 of winter, or like, it depends on your day length, obviously. But, um, 
Dear Klopp shows up a couple days before winter ends and just ruins everything. Dragonfly! Nah, he spits fire! Do you want to deal with that? No, I didn't think so. Antlion Tribute! I actually, I, I have no idea what that is. I haven't run into it yet. <laughs> so here you have it. This is our, our noob mode. Spiders, you're actually gonna want spiders, and you're gonna want the average amount of spiders, because monster meat can be used for good. Uh, spider webs are awesome, and spider glands are borderline essential. I mean, so is spider webs. I mean, let's be honest here, because fishing poles? Hell yeah! Okay. Oh, yeah, you know, less beefalo mating, that's, that's fine too, because no one likes a horny beefalo. They attack. It's not cool. Yeah, these are your forest animals, by the way. Don't kill any more than you have to. Because Krampus. And pangolins don't even give you any meat. I mean, feathers sometimes. Sometimes you have to kill innocent creatures to live. It's it's just the the way of the world. Okay, cave world. Um, if you were on a computer. You have to have, as the host, you have to have a really good computer in order to have Cave World rolling. Um, it's basically a whole other game, a whole other world attached to your game. Um, it's like running two worlds at once, basically. It's constantly evolving, as does the forest world. Uh, even if your characters aren't in there, there are changes happening. Um, there's lots of darkness, there's lots of monsters, and bunny men, and cool mushroom light up trees, and eye plants that got light bulbs, and <laughs> there's a lot of cool stuff. But if you're not experienced, don't make the game harder on yourself. Yeah, these things. Light flowers, they're cool. I mean, a lot of this stuff is unnecessary, like, uh... Cave ferns make you pretty. You you make your base prettier by creating a potted fern plant. <laughs> um, I haven't even seen some of this stuff before because I just don't play caves. Slurpers, that sounds bad. Slurtles and snurtles also sounds pretty bad. Bunny men are scary and they will attack you if you have meat. Rocky, that sounds like a bad time. Monkeys, I hate them in shipwrecked. Why wouldn't I hate them in caves? Yeah, cave monsters. Oh, the bats are annoying. Nightmare fissures, that sounds really an Oh my gosh, some of these things, I just... You don't want them. <laughs> Being honest. And I guess the last thing I'll go over... Sometimes you play on public servers and you just got those people who make your life worse and they won't leave So you ban them <laughs> I should actually probably save my preset for later um I wish I could rename it. That would be cool. Oh well. What else we got going on here? Um. Yeah, that's that's really much it. For uh, starting off your stuff. Um. Oh, so you'll know you'll have something. You'll have a prize when in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, while in game, you'll have a little present icon show up, and maybe even a little cute uh, notification noise. You have to open this not only at your base, but next to a science machine of some sort. The science machine, the alchemy machine. I don't remember if the magical machines uh, work as well. We'll have to try that out. Um, 
Oh. Interesting. Who is this man? <laughs> oh, the new character! This is Winona! Oh, man! Okay, so I'm totally, after this, gonna go online and look up Winona stats because Winona looks awesome. Like, maybe she can help me change the oil in my car sometime? <laughs> Not a euphemism. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So, um, they have to be open next to a science machine or alchemy engine. Um, and then you have the option to wear that item either right then and there or, you know, change it later. You can actually build closets that will let you change your, um, appearance at any time. But that's a lot of work. Okay, so I'll go over characters real quick. We got Wilson. He is our base character. In Don't Starve, he is one of the only available characters to play as at first. Um, he's a scientist. He's very smart. Um, I think he gets extra sanity back from crafting. Everyone gets a little bit of sanity back from prototyping, but I think Wilson might actually get a little bit more. Um, and he has a beard! You can trim off his beard after it's grown a certain length and use the beard shavings to make things. Um, he is considered a weak character. He doesn't have a lot of hit strength to him. Willow! Willow likes fire. <laughs> she comes with a lighter. Um, I believe in Don't Starve Together it has unlimited lighter fluid. However, in Don't Starve you have to keep crafting lighter fluid um, or just the lighter in general you can craft her lighter and give it to other people I think don't take my word for it look it up yourself <laughs> but what's really cool about Willow is that she gains sanity near fire whether it's her campfire a torch um, a forest fire perhaps wildfires um, as long as there isn't a larger uh, effect at work happening, as in it's completely dark and she's holding just a single torch, she will lose less sanity. Or it might even, they might even negate each other. It honestly depends on the situation. She also comes with a teddy bear. If she starts to go crazy, uh, nightmares will start to spawn and eventually they'll start to attack you. However, her teddy bear will fight them for you. He's so cute, and he can die, and it's heartbreaking. Wolfgang! He's super strong. Willow, by the way, is a weak character. Wolfgang is pretty strong. However, he's afraid of the dark. He will lose extra sanity compared to the others, if there is darkness. Wendy's pretty chill. She's a weak character as well, and she has a ghost dead sister. Yay! Her name is Abigail, and she just she floats around sometimes. Kind of cool, I guess. WX78 is a robot. <laughs> he is not human. He can speak, though. He's very adorable. If he gets struck by lightning, he will have super speed for a little while. He loses health in dam. <laughs> loses health in rain. So you got to be careful to always make sure he has shelter. Um, hiding under a tree isn't always going to do it. Um, and yeah, he can eat gears and actually upgrade his stats with gears. I'm a little iffy on the, uh, the mechanics there. No pun intended. Look him up. Mrs. Wickerbottom. She's a library. And <laughs> she's a grouch. She, I believe, is pickier about food and cannot eat spoiled food. However, she doesn't need to sleep. Um, your characters can sleep if you get a bedroll. However, she cannot sleep. I believe is her downfall. Uh, Woody! Oh, man. Um, if your friends are new to the game, don't let them play as Woody. Just, just don't. Uh, during full moons... Woody turns into a werebeaver. 
and he will not stop to be a werebeaver until the full moon is over and he has eaten a bunch of wood. However, being a werebeaver drains his sanity. If you don't uh, keep his little log meter up during non-full moon times, he will turn into a werebeaver. If he dies as a werebeaver, he will be resurrected as a werebeaver. It's... And he's got a talking axe. That's pretty cool. Wes! He's a mime. That's all that I know. He's considered a weak character. And he studies balloon mancy. I don't know what that means. No one's ever played as Wes before in my games. And Maxwell. My husband loves playing as Maxwell. Like, every single time. Um, I don't know about Maxwell's HP or strength. However, Maxwell can separate a portion of his sanity and create a shadow clone of himself. And the shadow clone will do whatever task you tell it to. One task per clone. So, you go into a forest. You, uh, you make a Maxwell clone. You chop a log. Your clone will start chopping logs until there is no more log to chop. <laughs> um downfall is that he's probably going to spawn some tree guardians that way so you might want to plant some pine cones in the background um it's actually more efficient to have him at rock quarries so he'll just chop all the rocks you will have to go and pick up everything though like just so you know Wickfred, she is my favorite she is a goddess I mean not really she's a valkyrie <laughs> She's a warrior. She's pretty strong. However, her biggest thing is that she can't eat non-meat items. She will not eat vegetables. She will not eat fruit. Uh, she will not eat butterfly wings to regain 10 points of health. Which is uh, really unfortunate sometimes. Um, she does eat spider glands. So that's cool. Um, oh, that's right. The... Oh, never mind. I was about to say something incorrect. Um, Wigfrid actually comes with a spear, three pieces of large ham, which isn't what it's actually called. It's just like a large piece of meat. And her helmet. Her helmet is super strong and can take a lot of the brunt of most hits before uh, breaking. And you know what the best part is, is that you can keep crafting her spear, her special powered spear, and her helmet. And you can give them to your friends, so they will all be equipped for battle. Just remember, um, you can't equip armor and book bags at the same time. Helmets don't count. Helmets are a hat. Weber! Uh, I don't like him. He's a Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> he is a literal Spider-Man. A man spider, if you will. Weber can eat monster meat and suffer less consequences than the other characters. Monster meat normally makes you lose sanity, um, by the way. Um, Weber will not be attacked by spiders upon sight. Weber comes with a thing of spider eggs that you can plant anywhere you like. And they will be his spider army. I guess. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> he creeps me out. I don't play as him. And we got Winona, who I know absolutely nothing about, except she's real cool. So I'm... I, I'm gonna do some research on her. Um, and if you haven't noticed, all the Don't Starve characters' names start with a W, except for Maxwell. Because M is an upside-down W. <laughs> and he's the bad guy, so he's upside-down. Hitting all the wrong buttons. Okay. Well, that's it for this video. Um, I'll see if I can get a game going later today. I got some errands to run. Uh, we'll be playing The Way VR tonight. Don't forget to tune in for that. Uh, Debt Wheeler is going to be performing for us. It's not a huge community party. We were all, we've were we all just been so tired. And a lot of the waivers are actually in Texas. Um, and I think they've got bigger things to worry about than... A community inspired event. <laughs> um, everyone's busy. People are back at school, so attendance is probably going to be a little low, but it's going to be fun. Um, and I guess that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I will hopefully see you all in the next video.